Welcome to Mossbourne Academy in Hackney. We're in a particularly disadvantaged and deprived part of London and we think we've done pretty well here to bring success where previously there's been failure. The most recent GCSE results show that 85% of our students achieve 5A star to C grades, including English and Maths. The value-added scores are very high at over 1,070. And this film is about the secrets behind that success. Hackney is one of the poorest boroughs in Britain with high social and economic deprivation. Mossbourne Community Academy opened five years ago on the site of Hackney Downs School, which was once dubbed the worst school in the country. 40% of our children here are on free school meals. Something like 30% uh, of the children on the special needs register. 28% of our youngsters have English as a, a second language. But the expectation here is that youngsters make at least two levels of progress over a key stage. And many of our students um, achieve more than that. Our school secrets of success. Number one, a structured environment. Hurry up, year seven, get into line. Set your hands out your pockets. OK, facing the front, ready to walk off. OK, off we go, year seven. I strongly believe that structure liberates children. Many of our children come from an unstructured environment, sometimes a chaotic environment. So it's really important when they come here that we introduce structure into their lives, providing very clear boundaries for them in terms of behaviour so that they know the rules and the regulations. Ensuring that there are lots of rituals and routines which act as touchstones for the children. Okay, I would like Sophia to start the reflection off, please. Throughout this lesson, I aspire to maintain an inquiring mind, a calm disposition and an attentive ear, so that in this class and all classes, I can fulfil my true potential. The mantra and reflection ask children to reflect at the beginning of the lesson on why they're there. They're there to learn. They're there to fulfil their potential. And although they say it six or seven times a day, and I'm sure some of them just say it without thinking, at the end of the day, they're asking themselves questions in that mantra. Am I doing as well as I should be? I'll remind you again tomorrow, full school uniform for the parents' evening. You turn up looking as smart as you do at the moment. The uniform is important. It gives a sense of corporate identity. It asks children to take pride in the way they look and the way they appear. It's important outside school that people will see our youngsters and say, they look good, they must go to a good school. And I think youngsters relish that idea as well. Certainly the parents do. Our school secrets of success. Number two, insistence on good behavior. Okay, readers open please. Open your reader please. I think a lot of places that you go, Children are expected to misbehave or expected not to do well, where here we expect every child to fulfil their absolute potential and to behave impeccably. And when they're behaving, they're learning. The key to this is consistency. I can lay down a policy, but what is absolutely critical is that every member of staff, teaching and non-teaching, implements that policy. And I say to staff at the staff meeting, look, if, if you pass a child who's misbehaving, who's dropped a bit of litter on the floor, I expect you to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, I will deal with that child first. And then afterwards, come back and see you and say, why haven't you done something about that? So it's getting every member of staff to agree to be interventionist and to support the policy of the school. One of the sort of controversial issues behind this building, and, but I, I stuck to my guns on it, was to say to the architects, I didn't want a central staff room. That I wanted a staff room in each of the learning areas. It was, I think one of the sort of odd things about our, our school system is that at break and lunch time, those vulnerable times of the day, 
staff often move in one direction to the staff room and the children move in the other direction to the playground and the corridors where, where sometimes misbehaviour occurs. It means that supervision is better because those members of staff in those uh, staff rooms, in those learning areas, can supervise children as they move in and out of the faculties at different times of the school day. If a child misbehaves at the academy, and it, and it does happen because children are children, we believe that swift, rigorous sanctions are the most effective. Things are dealt with immediately. The main sanctions that we have are detentions, so the swift taking away of a break, the taking away of the lunch period. For serious misdemeanours, we have a six o'clock detention that runs every night, staffed by senior staff, or we have Saturday morning detentions as well. Even though from time to time you may think that the rules are a bit extreme, but it's like you feel comfortable in that knowing that there are rules there and you know that the teachers are always there to help you. I like my house, but I prefer to be in school because I feel like safe, knowing that my friends are there and the teachers are always there supportive. And the teachers, yes, they're strict, but at the same time, they're fair. Our school's secrets of success. Number three, devolved management. At Mossbourne, the school is divided into learning areas. Each learning area is like a small school in itself. The head of learning area is responsible for every student's behaviour and progress within that part of the academy. This ensures that that head takes ownership of students' progress in a way that is not possible within other schools and other systems. Right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Deborah, you're going to do a little presentation on what's happening in, in maths. Yes, I'll just start by going over some of the figures. We've looked at the Key Stage 3 results already. Um, I meet with those seven heads of learning area on a regular basis to ensure that they're achieving well in that particular curriculum area. They're responsible for outcomes, they're responsible for staffing, they're responsible for resources, they're responsible for the quality of teaching. They all want to be um, head teachers one day and they're running mini schools so it's important I hold them to account for what happens. I don't think large institutions unless you do break them down into small manageable units work very well. Yeah. Matthew do you want to just um, yeah. sum up what you found in year seven? I carried out a um, homework audit across all of year seven to ease that transition for year sevens from primary to secondary school. We actually house the year sevens in a totally separate area of the school. A lot of them will arrive here on level twos and level threes. And we add extra hours to the curriculum in English and maths, so pupils will do five hours of English and five hours of maths each week. OK, then, so let me see what the questions are. We put a lot of effort into ensuring that the ethos and culture of the school is embraced at a very early stage by our youngsters. And if we can get it right in that first term of Year 7, things tend to go much better thereafter. Our school secrets of success. Number four, quality teaching and learning. On the board, write down the two main causes of labour immobility. Excellent, put it down. I think probably we're all as committed as one another and I think being part of that team makes it far easier to put in the long hours and then there's the passion as well. And because we get to see the results of this, we get to see success from our children, it makes it an extremely satisfying place to work. OK, I just wanted to talk briefly about a, a small technique uh, that I find particularly useful for Key Stage 3, teaching and learning. And this is to do with uh, securely giving students uh, new terms, new concepts. I think a lot is expected of teachers uh, in Mossbourne. They're really highly motivated to stay, um, do the extra time, because it really produces great results. There's a target within the school to have all lessons good or outstanding across all subject areas. We ask children to spend a lot more time in school through extension activities in the evening, Saturday morning activities, uh, and working well into twilight hours. Key Stage 3 start their school day at half past eight. If they have an extension class, then they will attend an extra lesson between 3.10 and 4.10. Every Key Stage 3 pupil attends two extra extension classes every week. Who wants to do Colin and Roy? Key stage four come in an hour later. They start at half past nine and they're 
traditional school day would finish at 10 past four. If they have extension class, they'll be in an extra class from 4.10 till 5.10. On a Saturday morning, we have a variety of different activities going on, um, broadening the curriculum, but also focusing on exam preparation. Chase away those winter blues. OK, what's persuasive about that? That will persuade somebody to book now, because it, it's an imperative, because it says book now. OK, it's an order, book now, good. There is an expectation here that staff will support the ethos of this academy, and that if they want to come and work here, then they will work in a long teaching day, and they will teach in the extension program. There is a no-hours contract that they're given, which is unlike some school. We simply ask teachers to um, meet the needs of the students and the organisation and curriculum of the school. Teachers are always willing to go that extra bit to help a child. The ch children are in on Saturday, teachers are in on Saturdays to help any children that are experiencing difficulties with anything. I know some friends, they pay a lot of money for their kids to have extra lessons, which in the schools here, they get free. Our schools see because of success. Number five, consistent assessment. If you could pass around those exercise books and we can spend five minutes to look at a number of things. A, to see that they're marked, looking particularly at whether there are levels of attainment entered. Assessment is key. A vice principal here is in charge of assessment and assessment only. And it's his job to make sure that students are tracked really carefully and that the consultative process in the school works well when the data comes into him. What I want to do is just start by looking at uh, last year's results, talking about where you maybe hit your targets, where you didn't hit your targets. Well, shall we start with the English and see how you're doing? It's really, uh, really important that he year. advises the senior team and the middle managers and others in the school whether, in fact, the strategies are working for an individual student. Something I am going to bring your attention to, which I think uh, Mum will have noticed, there's two the things yes. here. The yes here. Yeah. And nowhere else have we got a yes in, in concerns. How could you change that so that the same thing doesn't happen again this year? Um, I could possibly ask the teacher to make sure I sit at the front, not near a window. Mm. Yeah. And what I can do to support you in that is that I will email that teacher and check that you've done that. We absolutely insist that our teachers must be totally accountable for any student who is not making the required progress within the school. If you're Adolf Hitler, Germany has had its land taken away from it. What are Germany going to do? Try and reclaim it. Right, try and reclaim it. I've worked in a number of schools around London and in other countries and it is absolutely the difference. It is the real accountability both on the teacher, on each member of the leadership team and also the accountability that's put onto the student. We also make the student accountable for their grades. They should be making the progress. If they don't, it costs them time. It costs them hours after school to catch up as well. We pick up things here very quickly if they're going wrong. I've described good assessment systems, strong, a strong focus on teaching and learning, good behaviour management policies, etc. What's really important is that head teachers and senior teachers in schools monitor effectively whether all those things are coming together in an effective way and when, when there's slippage to do something about it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm.